Hardware is hard. If you have been around product development teams or embedded engineers, you might have heard these things before. But what actually makes hardware so hard? And what is hardware design and hardware design engineer's job? So in this video, let's explore that. Hi, I'm Pranesh Sharma, owner of Get to Buy Technologies Private Limited. I'm also working as a hardware consultant for Electronics Infra. I've been working as a hardware design engineer for the past four and a half years, having worked on multiple hardware products in the field of automotive, IOD, and medical sectors. Firstly, let's explore what embedded hardware designing really is in its essence. Embedded hardware designing is the engineering process of developing electronic circuits systems that incorporates microcontrollers or microprocessors, sensors, actuators, communication interfaces, all integrated into a single printed circuit board or an array of printed circuit boards, also known as PCBs. Think about it as the motherboard of your PC or laptop. The microcontroller and microprocessor act as the brain of the system, processing the inputs from various sensors and input devices, further controlling the actuator's display, sound, or transmission of data to perform specific tasks. Sensors measure environmental parameters such as temperature, pressure, motion, while actuators convert electrical signals into physical actions such as turning a motor or adjusting a valve. Communication between these different components is facilitated through the multiple industry standard protocols, each offering its distinct advantages and trade-offs. Communication within the printed circuit board is facilitated through the interfaces like SPI, IROC, UART, etc. When the communication is needed to be established with external components, sensors or modules, we use wired or wireless approaches. Wired approaches include Control Area Network, CAN, RS-485, RS-232, Ethernet and more. Wireless approaches include Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, Zigbee, LoRa, GSM, 4G and much more than that. All these communication protocols ensure seamless data transfer between different parts of the systems, enabling real-time processing and control. For example, in automotive application, CAN is widely used to connect different electronic subsystems like motor driver, instrument cluster, power distribution unit, battery management system with the brain of the vehicle known as the Vehicle Control Unit or VCU. This not only ensures that each subsystem can be controlled but also ensures that the faults in these subsystems can be detected through vehicle diagnostics. This is an example where an array of hardware is used for achieving a task. Each of the above mentioned components like VCU, BMS, instrument cluster and motor controller are complex hardware in itself and we, hardware design engineers are the ones who design not only the individual hardware but also the whole architecture which allows us to achieve the functionality in the end product. A VCU is similar to the brain in a human body which has to interact with the various parts of the body to achieve tasks based on external inputs we receive. So we beg to ask the question. What are the challenges that hardware design engineers have to address on a day-to-day -day basis? And trust me, these challenges are what makes hardware designing so much exciting and fun. Hardware design engineers have to deal with everything that involves building a system, starting with the conceptualization, planning and architecture of the system. Then comes the development part. We have to select all the components that we need to put in a printed circuit board or the array of printed circuit board. Embedded hardware design engineers have to battle with the balance of performance, reliability, cost, size and efficiency of the hardware they design. Weighing the pros and cons of using a component in your design, scouring through hundreds and thousands of data sheets, checking the availability, pricing and lead time is paramount for a hardware design engine. Once these components are finalized, a hardware design engineer starts the process of designing the circuits, schematics with the help of various data sheets, application notes, reference designs and simulation tools. Most of the work is done on EDA tools like my favorite Altium Designer Professional. During this phase, the experience, core knowledge, discipline and concentration are needed in order to make sure that there are no errors in the schematic that you design. And trust me, these silly mistakes can render the entire hardware completely useless, costing not only thousands and lakhs in losses, but also the loss of time. Hardware manufacturing takes anywhere from 10 days to about 25 days, depending on the complexity of the hardware and the lead time of the components. The schematics are then used to start the actual design of the physical hardware we use in the form of printed circuit board. The hardware design engineer makes a decision on the layer count of the PCB to be used based on cost, size, targeted application and most importantly, the certification and the compliances a hardware must pass in order to be sold in the market. 
most hardware design engineers use two to four layer star cups for simple printed circuit boards for general purpose applications. For high noise environment and complex high speed designs, a hardware design engineer can use six layers or more. Balancing the production cost with design and performance is where the challenge lies. Once a stack up is finalized, a hardware design engineer can start the placement of components. A basic design can have anywhere from 4 to 10 components, but a complex design can have anywhere from hundreds to thousands of components. These components need to be placed on a PCB, keeping in mind various parameters which will ensure each component can work effectively. The various parameters include heat dissipation, electromagnetic emissions, sensitivity and clearance of components or a group of components. Managing these constraints while staying within the specified size takes a lot of skills, planning and critical thinking, which a hardware design engineer develops as they progress in their career. Once these components are placed, the hardware design engineer connects all these various components to copper traces and copper pins, ensuring seamless signal and power transmission between these components. The design, once completed, is sent out for the manufacturing and assembly process. After the manufacturing and assembly process, the hardware design engineer gets to see his creation in real life and brace themselves for the surprises that the hardware can throw at them. And trust me, the hardware can throw a lot of surprises once it arrives in your hand. These assembled printed circuit boards are then thoroughly tested for functionality. The embedded software is written to run on these hardware. The hardware may go through a few iterations before achieving the intended functionality. I have just scratched the surface of things in this video. Each subtopic covered deserves its own videos or a series of videos to understand it fully in detail. I hope you like this introduction to hardware designing and a life of a hardware design engineer. So stay tuned until next time.